Hey you guys, it's Peter and Boo Radley. And welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And Boo Radley and I are getting ready to do a little meditation reading and talk to you guys about what we think about the meditations. Are you ready? Now, he'll probably go behind me and dig into the chair and uh, find his little spot or he'll sit over there or he'll sit behind me. So are you ready to hear the uh, meditations, Boo Radley? Okay, so today I brought the Daily Book of Positive Quotations. I kind of read ahead, well, I didn't read ahead, but I looked at the titles to see which ones I liked. Do you hear them back there? And then I also brought the Melody Beatty Journey to the Heart. So I think I'm gonna start with the Daily Book of Positive Quotations. And let's get into this one right now. July 9th, Community. There can be no vulnerability without risk. There can be no community without vulnerability. There can be no peace and ultimately no life without community. M. Scott Peck. Most of us are hesitant when we first join a new community. Will we fit in? Do we want to let the other members of the community into our lives? What does becoming a member of the community say about us? V. Boo Radley, did you find it yet? These are important questions to consider. But we can't make the world a better place except by working with others. And we can't work with others if we merely stand in the background judging and withholding. We must be willing to risk vulnerability if we want to be engaged, an engaged member of a real community. I am willing to risk being vulnerable because I believe in the power of community. And I think that this is such a, a fantastic meditation, especially for somebody like me who always felt like I was on the outside looking in. You know, growing up, I didn't really have that many close friends. There would be periods here and there where I was close with people, but it was short-lived. And I was horribly bullied for all 12 years growing up. And so I always felt like I was, I don't know, like I was on the outside looking inside, so to speak. You know, it's interesting because my 30-year high school reunion is this summer. And... <clears throat> I've gone to my 20 and I've gone to my 10. And so I was texting with a friend of mine today. Um, it actually was supposed to be two years ago, but they put it off because of the lockdown and things like that. So they're having it this summer. And she was texting me and like nobody that we know is going, like none of our close friends. And she said, because I did have close girlfriends my final two years of high school. And she was like, what are your thoughts on going to the reunion? And I said, you know, there was a period where I really felt like this was something that I needed to do for me, but I don't really have that need anymore, you know? And what was so weird was when I went to my 10 year high school reunion, it was kind of just a, it was everybody like talking about what they did for a living and they'd say, so what do you do for a living? I'm an in insurance, you know, it was like that kind of thing. The 20 year was actually fantastic. And I went with my husband and another close friend and so many people came up to me and, you know, were like, you know, hey, like, I thought a lot about this. I had been, at that point, I had written for, you know, some different organizations and they had seen me talking about bullying and anti-bullying and things like that and inclusion and what we're doing about all of that. And I had done, like, a lot of advocacy for anti-bullying in the schools. And they knew that. And so a lot of people came up to me and were like, I'm really sorry if I, you know, was like part of that in high school and I really wish I hadn't been. And people were just glorious to me and they were so nice to my husband and I. And he knew a lot of people there from work. And um, it was just a really, it was a fun night. And I'm really glad that I went to my 20th. Um, but, you know, I always kind of had this Romy and Michelle high school reunion kind of attitude towards it. Like, I'm going to show them that they didn't get the best of me. And it was weird because when I went to my 20th, I'll never forget, like, signing in. It was, like, the class president who signed everybody in. And when I walked up to him, he was like, oh, Peter, how are you? And it was like... <laughs> You know, I'm still in my head with the memories from 1990 of how this guy, you know, like, he didn't treat me really. He wasn't really part of it. But just, like, he was part of that group, you know. And I was like, oh, God, he knows who I am. And it just was so weird and, and very fearful for me to walk into that. As a person with social anxiety, I was very terrified. And, in fact, we sat here at the uh, condo for a while, and I went back and forth that day between going or not going. And, and Alex was like, you have worked yourself up so much over this. We're going. Like, you need to do this for you. And, you know, I had such a good time. I had such a blast. And people were so welcoming to me and so nice. And it was like, I was able, I think, through therapy and through recovery and just letting go of everything in life. And when you get older, like, stuff doesn't, doesn't mean as much as to you as it did before. And I can remember my friend 
was like all of these people that are coming up and they're excited to hear about your life and talking to you and apologizing are the same people that made your life a living hell 20 years ago. And I was like, I just don't have the animosity and the anger anymore. I just don't. And so that reunion was so cathartic for me. It really allowed me to let go. And the other thing that it made me realize was whether they liked it or not, I was part of that community. Bullied or not, I was part of that community. There will never be another class of 1990 at the high school that I graduated with, you know? And I'm part of that. And I walked away that night and a much different person than I had arrived. I had a arrived at the, you know, the reunion thinking, I have something to prove. And I left realizing I never had anything to prove to begin with, you know? And it just was such an amazing experience. But now, I don't know that I feel like I have that need anymore. You know, I don't really have close relationships with those people. There's, some, there's a handful of people that I'd like to see what they're doing today, but I see it on Facebook. You know, and I just don't know that I have the need to do that today. Um, and so, I'm not really sure yet. If I go, I think it'll be kind of a last-minute decision that I make, like the week of. Um, and so my friend was texting me and I said to her, you know, like I, I thought that this was something that I wanted to do and now that it's coming up closer to it, it's just like I don't know that it has the importance to me that it once did. I've developed other communities. I've developed other communities in my life where I, I mean something to people. You know, my 12-step recovery group, my fellowship, my friends that I have in recovery, you know, my neighborhood. My neighborhood has become something to me that's a community that means so much to me, you know. It started as kind of this joke on my drama channel that I was going to run for the HOA pageant and become like the president of the HOA. And it's so funny in talking to my neighbors. So there's four people from the HOA Homeowners Association that are stepping down this fall. And so there's positions available. And my neighbor across the street who's on the board, she said, you really should run. Do you want me to nominate you? She said it would be good for you to get involved. You love talking to the neighbors. And that has been something that has only happened in the last year or two, you know? And I'm so thankful for my neighbors, like sitting on my front porch day in and day out. They're so friendly. They ask me if I need rides. You know, they come over. And so I have been able to be part of this community, but I have been, had to been willing to put my hand out and introduce myself. Like if I'm, you know, at the pool or walking down the street or whatever, and I see somebody that I don't know from this neighborhood, I'll be like, oh, I don't think I've met you before. And even though that's uncomfortable for me, I do that because I want to be part of this community. I do the same thing in recovery. You know, I put my hand out to the newcomer and, and even the old timer that I've never met before because I want to be part of that community. And I have to put action behind my words if I want to be, for, behind, if I want to be part of that. I can't just wait, you know? And that's a big part of, I think, why in retrospect, I wish I would have been more involved in high school. I, it wouldn't have taken away the bullying by any means. And I'm not making excuses for other people's, you know, the poor behavior of hurt, you know, hurting my feelings or whatever. But I think that I would have felt more involved. I think I would have had a more of a community element to it. You know, I look at other people that I went to high school with that were bullied for the same things as me, but they were in drama, they were in choir, they were involved. They have a community, you know? There's like these four guys that were like real good friends in high school. They all kind of were bullied a little bit, you know? And I look at it and they're like, you know, meeting up every year here, going there, going to Vegas, going to some place, you know, renting a house out in Michigan. And I'm like, I wish I had had that in high school, you know? I wish I had that. And today I do with my friends in recovery, but I never had that then. So this sense of community I think is important. I think, you know, when we see ourselves through the eyes of other people is important as well. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, I don't need people and people hurt me and whatever. And they push and they push and push away. And I felt like that for a long time. I really did. And, you know, I don't know. So I think that belonging to something, especially when I felt, like I said at the beginning of this, on the outside looking in, in almost every experience that I had in my entire life, I felt like I was on the outside looking in. So I never really felt a part of something and it really hurt. I felt very alone in this world. You know, until I started putting my foot into whatever community I was part of and said, okay, like I'm here and I wanna be part of this, you know? I was in 12 step meetings for a very, very, I'm talking, until I came back, which was, you know, 13 years of sobriety, I, there was a long period of time, was it 13 years? No, it was more like 17 years until I came back. But there was a long period of time when I was going to meetings and I didn't really talk to anybody, but like my best friend and my other friends, you know, that like after the meeting, but like in meetings I would pass or I would just like share real briefly and I never introduced myself to people. I wasn't part of a community and therefore I wasn't getting the rewards and the promises that come with being part of a community, you know, that good feeling that you have inside. 
And it was important to me. It was important to me to be part of something when I came back. And I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna be part of something, like I have to do the work. Like I have to do the work to be part of this today because I do, I do want people to like me and I do want people when I walk into a room to be like, hey Peter, how are you? And be excited to see me. Like those are things that make me feel good, right? But you know, you have to give back what was so freely given to you. If you want to be part of a community, you have to be part of a community. And we're all parts of communities, whether it's an apartment building that you live in or a neighborhood like me or a 12 step program or a work, a work environment is a community. You know, and it's like I would always show up to all of the holiday parties, to everything, because I knew like for me to be part of this work community that I was in, that meant showing up to things, right? Like, and I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in if they're going to have a Christmas party or a holiday party for you, show up. Just show up for half an hour, you know, and show that you care enough to be part of that. Because I think that through our actions often... What we're telling people is, I don't want to know you, I don't care to know you, and please leave me alone. And then what we're saying to ourselves is, I'm okay being alone by myself. And I don't want to be alone today. I want to have people in my life. I want to matter to people. I don't want to be all alone with just my husband and feel like I'm completely, you know, at a loss. So anyway, I think that's a great meditation. Um, I don't know that I'm going to read the Melody Beatty one. Maybe I'll just, it's called Learn to Focus Your Energy. So I'm going to focus my energy on being happy joyous and free today. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing weekend. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.